welcome back to the Greenwich Homestead. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about chickens. On my homestead I've shown you guys a lot of different aspects of the stead that we have. We do have rabbits and pigs, but I also have, as you can kind of see behind me here, I also have birds. And a lot of times people are like, well, you know, I want a homestead, where should I start? Biggest places to start, the vegetable garden, and some chickens. One of the key things to remember to be a successful homesteader is that you need to be self-sufficient. You need to be working towards that end goal of providing what you need to live by yourself on your own property. And chickens are one of the easiest ways to give you an abundance of nutrition, whether you're eating the birds or the eggs, or you're just using them to help you till your garden and spread your compost. Chickens also provide a very easy, accessible source of income through selling their eggs. And egg selling is one of the things that I choose to do here on my stead. I've actually catered my flock 100% around selling the eggs. As you work a market that you start learning, there are different little niches and things that you can tap into to help sell a product that you know people will buy. And one of the easiest ones is chicken eggs. Most people like the idea of farm fresh eggs. So when you come to a market and you are offering a dozen chicken eggs and they're ranging in colors from white to blue to green to brown to dark brown, people love it and they will pay more for a more unique product. Another thing that chickens are amazing for is their ability to sustain themselves. So we do offer supplemental feed just for nutrition value. But our chickens and our birds here on the homestead are mostly free range. They eat grass, they eat bugs, they eat weeds, they dig in the dirt and get worms. It makes them much more healthy, it makes their meat much tastier and it makes their eggs much tastier. Now I talked about catering my flock to the egg color. This is something that I've been working on over the past couple of years. I started out with just a couple simple little backyard chickens that laid white eggs and I got my hands on an Americana that lays a kind of bluish green egg. And then I learned about all the different ones. So some of the things that I have in my flock now, I have copper morans for that dark brown egg. I have a cross between a copper moran and an Americana, which gives you an olive egg, which is kind of a, a darker green egg. And then I've recently purchased a flock from McMurray Hatcheries that are called a Whitings, and they come in a true blue or true green. Now, I highly recommend the Whitings chickens if you're going to start a backyard chicken farm. Hang on a second. So we had a visitor. This is a Whitings hen. She is only about two months old. And as you can see, beautiful feathering, beautiful coloring. The reason that I recommend the Whitings is because they are a very healthy, very hardy chicken breed. They're really good at free range. They're very fast moving. They're not a big lumbering chicken. In the name Whitings True Blue and Whitings True Green, they lay blue and green eggs. They are bred for their egg color and not their feathering, which means you can have a flock of the Whitings and have a hundred different variations of color. This is another one. I got the whitings to add to my egg production as well as to sell fertilized eggs or to sell chicks to people for backyard farms. I also, in this new flock that I got, purchased a few different chicks that I've been wanting to have for a while. One set that I got was McMurray's new Silver Lace Cochins. Now I love Cochin chickens, they're the ones that have all the feathers on their legs. They're just absolutely adorable to watch when they're full grown. They're really good sitters. They will sit on pretty much anything. In fact, I actually have an older Cochin that hatched me some duck eggs last year. So if you want to hatch naturally, get yourself a couple Cochins for your flock. And then lastly in this new batch that I got was some dark Brahmas. Now the dark Brahmas just lay a simple white egg. However, I have wanted Brahma chickens in my flock for a very long time. They are a giant breed bird and I'm super excited about them because they just look so neat walking around your yard. Mine are still only a couple months old so they haven't filled in but I will throw up a little clip of what the Brahma chickens look like. When you're starting a backyard chicken farm, the one thing that people always worry about is I can't afford to spend that kind of money on a coop. Well, you don't need a fancy coop, you really don't. 
for backyard chickens, if you're only having two or three, you can even get just a small little one. You can make them really easily. This is ours. This is the one that houses all of our birds. And when I say all of our birds, I have, as of right now, I have 11 full-grown chickens, uh, nine adolescent chickens, and 14 ducks, and three geese. Now, they're not in there all the time. That's just where they go up at night, so it doesn't have to be a super large space. They do have roosting bars for the chickens, the ducks are on the ground, and then I got nest boxes in there for when they want to lay their eggs. This is what the coop inside looks like. So it's a really simple design that we have made. It's just for their nighttime protection to lock them all up so that they're not wandering around. It's two cattle panels. We built a, a square two by four frame and we attached the cattle panels to that frame. Now the one thing that we did different that from other people that you may have seen with this particular type of coop is we did not attach the cattle panels inside the frame. We actually attached them to the outside so we could suspend the frame about a foot off the ground which keeps the 2x4s out of the mud and dirt and makes them last a lot longer. One thing that I have seen with this style of coop is people complain that after a couple of years they start to rot and fall apart. So that's our little tricks to help stop that. We also made the door frames and on the back, if you can see in there, it's a little dark. It's the same frame style for the, that we have up here for the door but we did a cross piece to put a window in and then we put tin up and that provides a solid wall on the back. In the summertime, I have this mesh material on here. It's an old pool cover, so it does have a little bit of water repellent tendencies, but it's breathable, so it allows the air to flow through. And as you can see, that front is completely open. Yes, it is chicken wire as opposed to hard wire cloth, but you guys are inside a fence, inside a fence. You can kind of see the frame right there, how it's above the ground. Now, the other thing that I do in my coop is a deep litter, and you can see Miss Mabel over there is demonstrating what chickens do best. The deep litter in the chicken coop is one of the things that I do to help with the farm. How I do that, you might ask, is the deep litter method is something that we imply using compost and wood chips and we put in at into the chicken coop at least once or twice a year. We fill the whole thing about six inches deep and the chickens get in there, their feed gets in there, they scratch it around, they break it down. It gets filled up with all of their manure and sometimes I'll add garden scraps in there for them to pick through. What's awesome about that is once a year we will go in and we will clean that all out, scrape it all the way back down to the dirt and put that into a compost pile and start again in the chicken coop and then we have this wonderful, beautiful, fertilized soil that can go onto our garden beds. We also have quail. Now, the quail is something that my husband... Chickens. The so quail is a project that my husband started and he is doing so because he wants to sell starter kits for people. Quail are a really great backyard bird to have. They are much quieter than chickens normally. They are a very quick turnaround. So you'll see there's different cages. He's basically going through a process where he's designing a cage and trying to get the right one. And once he has a setup that he likes, then we will be offering quail kits to people. And lastly for us, one of the reasons that we have chickens and that you can use them as well in your endeavors is what you see behind me here. It's very similar to why we have the pigs. So this area here this is one of the spaces that we are expanding. As you can tell, it's extremely dense forest back here. So it's a little difficult to get any type of machinery back here to help cleaning the property. One side of the fence where the chickens don't get to, and then the other side. So we are trying to get back in here to have access to the gymnasium building, several little outbuildings back here that are completely entangled in jungle that we have to get to. So bringing the birds in, they clear the underbrush and they open it up so we can come in with chainsaws and cut some of the smaller trees out and then be able to come in with the bobcat and knock some of the bigger trees out and get this area cleared. So they've actually been on this spot for almost one full season and you can see how much of a difference it makes. When you hear the phrase, chickens are the gateway animal, I believe it's true. If you want to get into homesteading and you want a livestock of some kind, I highly recommend getting chickens. The best thing about chickens is despite them being livestock, unlike other livestock, you don't have 
to butcher chickens to have sustenance. They will provide you with eggs and they can live a long, happy life giving you nothing but fresh eggs for your kitchen. On top of that, they're super friendly as long as you are out there with them. They have these great personalities. Every chicken I have has a different personality and a different attitude. They're fun to look at and most towns, you can even have chickens in city limits as long as you don't as long as you don't have a rooster for obvious reasons. Go ahead, look onto your city ordinances, see if you can have backyard chickens, how many you can have. Three or four good laying hens can provide you with plenty of eggs for a small family to sustain on and never have to buy eggs again. Add about five or six more and you can sell eggs at the farmer's market. Another great benefit of chickens is when they're still young and they haven't quite learned all of the bad habits of scratching is you can put them in your garden and just let them free range and they will keep most of your garden pests away. Keep in mind, however, they will start to scratch, especially if there's exposed dirt, they're gonna, on a hot day, they're gonna wanna bury themselves in it and dig it up. So if you have fresh starts or baby plants in your garden, I don't recommend doing this, but once your garden is fully established, you can allow your baby chicks to wander through it and they will help keep all the pests out. They're really a very versatile animal to own on the homestead. That's my biggest tip. If you wanna get started on a homestead, or at least just being slightly self-sufficient, get yourself some backyard chickens and grow a garden. And remember, get your hands dirty.